Hey guys, don't click away from this video. This is a real video. Forget about the still picture. I'm setting up a preface here to educate you. This is not a Black Death video, but I will talk about Black Death. If you open the hood of a Mercedes that runs terrible, or it's hard to start, or it cranks and doesn't run, and the entire tops of the injectors are covered in black soot. And if it does run, maybe you hear what sounds like an exhaust leak at the top of the head. That is a Black Death engine with the injector seal leaking where it screws into the head, which is a copper compression washer. That's a different story. I'm going to give you something better because there's a lot of these vehicles that the top of the engine is perfectly clean. There's no audible or visual warnings of a problem. They crank and they don't run and you're confused and you might start replacing the fuel pump in the tank, the fuel pump on the head, sensors, this, that, the other. You're wasting your money. Follow this video. It's extremely thorough, comprehensive, and it delves into all the little minute areas where most people don't go into how to figure out fuel pressure volume and know where that fuel's going, why this vehicle's not starting I haven't seen a better one on YouTube I that's why I made this video I do a lot of German cars so watch my video and have a good day thank you what's up guys this is LG doing another video but here we are with the Mercedes-Benz OM 642 that is an engine designation this is a three liter okay Th this engine's been in production since 05 and up it's a v6 three liter aluminum block aluminum heads turbo diesel Let's not go crazy with all the specs. Here's the deal. These have cranking and no start issues. And I'm going to show you what I mean. You put the key in. This is on a timer, so to speak. Well, most of the modern cars, they're, they're on a relay, so to speak. So I'm going to hit the key and release, and it's going to crank. Hear it? My hand's been off the key the whole time. It's going to crank for that, you know, five, seven, ten seconds. It's not starting. Okay, this is not uncommon with diesels. There's a lot of reasons. But let me address one common reason. It's low fuel pressure. Be it the low pressure system from the tank forward to the mechanical pump. You could have a bad in-tank pump that will not bring up the, you know, 45 to 65 pounds of pressure and... Uh, there's about a half a liter per X amount of seconds that should be pumped volume wise. But the idea is if you don't have your, you know, 40, 50, 60 pounds of pressure behind the high pressure mechanical pump on the head, this thing is going to have a hard time starting. You also need some volume, not just pressure. But I want to address injectors. This is one of the vehicles that has the black death syndrome. Now, this car is in really great shape. Uh, believe it or not, from what I understand, because this was brought to me from another shop, because I'm a specialist at diagnostics, they say uh, this is one of their customers, and they really want to figure it out. They love the owner of the vehicle, and he's a local priest, no less. <laughs> and all that aside, my job's to fix cars and not to get emotional about anything else. So the idea behind this is what's wrong. Now let's do an investigation under the hood. So I covered the basics. There is fuel in the tank. The vehicle is a maintained vehicle. The mileage is about 150, which isn't terrible. But look at how clean these injectors are. This is, this is not a Black Death engine. Black Death means that the injectors, okay, we're looking at the, this is common rail fuel injection. So we're looking at the rail and the tubes that feed the injectors. Black Death means that you're going to see some kind of soot from the combustion chamber coming up above into the uh, valve cover and valley area. It could, you could just have a sooty covering because the compression sealing ring on the injector is faulty. I do not see any evidence on either bank of any black death whatsoever. This is a very clean engine. Now, let me show you some quick, excellent tests that you should be aware of. So I'm back in the vehicle because it's very noisy on the highway that I work near. Anyway, the Black Death Syndrome, like I showed you, if you look into the cylinder head where the injectors are mounted, you'll see black sooty compounds coming up out of the injector well and covering the tops of the injectors, the valve cover, the valley. Um, that would be that copper washer under the injector that could possibly be leaking. Now, I do not see any evidence on this engine, and the mileage is relatively low because some of these diesels on the Mercedes could go 250, 350 as far as mileage. Uh, three, you know, I'm talking 
250,000 plus. Now on this vehicle, we're relatively low. Um, but what I do know, previous owner has replaced the low pressure pump in the tank, the under hood filter, and the high pressure pump on the head. So this is a humdinger, so to speak. That's why they're at my shop because they did all the basics and are having no luck. But I know a little bit more than the average person. Here's what we need to do. The low pressure system, like I said, has to supply a certain amount of pressure and volume to the high pressure pump. And in turn, the high pressure pump has to compress that fuel into way higher pressure. You want at least anywhere around 3,900 PSI just to start this engine fuel pressure wise. I, I kid you not. This vehicle supposedly can max out around 23,000 PSI on the high pressure side. I've never seen readings like that. Maybe it's for extreme conditions, but think about a system that could run anywhere. You know, at idle, if things are healthy, you might be around, I don't know, from what I've seen on the scanners, you're, you're gonna be anywhere from two to 4,000 PSI if things are just humming away. But imagine you could get up to 23,000. At any rate, this vehicle does need excessive pressure to run at idle. Um, and to crank this engine over and get it started, I, I will tell you this, I don't have an exact number, but I will tell you from what I've seen from live, meaning in my shop and from all the experts I've talked to, you easily need high 3000, low 4000 PSI to get this thing running. So if you're doing a, a fuel pressure test cranking over at idle, meaning you're not, you, first of all, forget idle. You you get in the vehicle and go to crank it and start it. It won't start. If you don't have at least mid to high 3000 PSI in the fuel rail, you're not going to start this vehicle. Uh, I've had a lot of these particular engines come in where what the cranking pressure is 15, 1600. You probably have a leaky injector. So let's investigate that. Okay, so a quick recap. So we, we know this vehicle will crank and it won't start. The mileage is not excessively high on this vehicle. I'm going to do it one more time. You hear it? Okay, and by the way, I do have a good cam crank sensor. I checked all that. I do have RPM on the scanner. My cranking fuel pressure, the high pressure rail is only showing uh, about 1500 PSI. That is way too low. This common rail diesel for Mercedes, this particular engine, the OM642, at least you got to see mid to high 3000 or low 4000 PSI worth of fuel pressure in the high pressure side of the system in the common rail to get this thing up and running. It needs less pressure once it's running, okay? So one uh, tip off would be if you could spray a little teeny spritz of ether or another starting fluid. Some guys like to use spray silicone. There's all different pros and cons. You definitely have to be careful. Ether could blow a piston into, into pieces. Um, the idea is this, if you could start it on an, a substitute fuel and then it runs great, you have a, a, a cranking low pressure problem in the high pressure segment of the system. Does that make sense? Low pressure in the high pressure part. The tank pump only makes around 65 PSI max. That's all you need to get the high pressure pump uh, satisfied to compress that fuel into something more. But if the high pressure side is below the 35 to 4200 mark on cranking, you're not going to get this thing running. So let's investigate a little further. Like I showed you under the hood before, the basics are covered. Let's go further. Okay, so very briefly, I'm going to go under the hood in a second, but this common rail system means that the fuel pressure that is compressed through the first the low pressure pump feeds the high pressure the high pressure pressurizes the rail the common rail is almost like called storage injection it stores a high volume of fuel to place it behind all the injectors that's why they call it common rail because all the injectors share one rail one pressure one volume there's not segmented areas there now, the reason I'm bringing this up is when you have a problem with fuel pressure leaking through injectors, if you don't have the black death up at the top, and even that doesn't mean much. I mean, that's more of a compression leak. So where's this fuel going? Why, why do I now only have 1,500 PSI cranking when I need a hell of a lot more than that? I'm going to tell you why. 
it would either go into the cylinder, the injector is leaking at the delivery area, which would be the tip of the injector where it's supposed to inject. If it's dripping, leaking, not sealing, you're going to have fuel in the cylinder. And you know how you know that? When you go like this, crank, 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 guess what? You're going to have smoke at the tailpipe. I don't have any smoke. I have no soot and nothing is wet back here. This is dry. There's nothing, and I've done this many times, okay? Don't judge me on just the simple quick video. I am telling you, I've cranked this engine over three, four, five times in a row. There's no smoke in the back. There's no soot. There's no liquid. There is zero coming out of the tailpipe. You know what that tells me? We are not losing fuel pressure through the injector tip or nozzle where it's supposed to shoot the fuel. That is not leaking. Guess what? These fuel injectors could have an internal leak. What does this mean? The internal leak on these injectors is considered to be a return line leak. The injector could leak internally, and when it does, it goes right out through the return line back to the tank. So this is a odorless, visual-less leak. You don't see it. You don't smell it. You don't hear it, it. You don't know it exists. And now you're confusing. You start throwing parts at your car. You're going to waste your money. Let me show you a great little trick. We have to take the return line off. And Mercedes has a very u unique name for that part of the vehicle. And Mercedes calls it a leak oil line. I'm going to show it to you. Why do they call it leak oil? Because technically diesel fuel is a light oil. It's like kerosene, highly refined. It really is. It's like lamp oil, okay? Cars will run on it because diesels have super high compression. But basically, it's not very volatile like gasoline. And anyway, the leak oil line is still your return line. And if an injector has an internal leak, it's going through that line. Let's check this out. I'm under the hood. I have all the beauty covers off. Here is your return line. Okay, we're gonna also call it a, a leak oil line, okay? Every injector has a port that has this line. Now, how do you disconnect it? It's very simple, I'm gonna show you. Basically, you have this disc that spins, push down on top of the line. I'm gonna do this one in the center, it's a little easier to see. So, this is tight, you can see it's on there. Push down in the center, and then pull, put your fingers underneath on this disc, which is your coupler, okay? And ra raise the coupler with your fingers like this, and you're gonna hear it click. Okay, let me just get my hand in there. Okay, it just clicked in the upward position, and then you're gonna take it off like that, see? Now, once you get all, all of these off of the vehicle, you're able to now look at the injector return ports, and that's what we're trying to do. So once you get your return line off, or leak oil line as Mercedes calls it, you have your return ports on the injectors. You want to look at these during cranking because if you have excessive fuel coming out of the return port, that's an internal injector leak. You're not going to see it at the tailpipe. It means the injectors are leaking out the return. They should not do that. They should hold pressure during cranking. That's where you get your 4,000 pounds to start the engine or 38 or 42 or whatever. It's got, it can't be 25. It can't be 1,500. You're not going to start the car. So if rail pressure is below, I want to say about 30 six would be on a good day because that's even low but if you have 39 plus you're probably going to start your car if you have below you're screwed these return ports need not to flow excessive fuel during cranking that's all this video is about get your return line off safely i left my mass airflow sensors hooked up my intake tube I did, there's no sensors disconnected because when i crank this over i want the vehicle computer to think everything's just fine and i want to see what's coming out of these ports you see that this nozzle here was excessive flow you should not see anything kind of pouring out it should be very dry or just like like a little wetness at the tip you should not have like a, a pool of anything coming out of here during cranking hang on
I don't know if you can see, this injector and this injector are pouring out. The other injectors will not look like that. I'm gonna show you again. Look at that dumping out there. And notice how, I don't know if you could see, but this one here was like dry like you see it now. These have some flow. Even that little bit of flow, it's not gonna shoot across the strut tower or anything crazy. It's just gonna be like a little mushroom at the top flowing down nice and steady. That is not normal. These should remain dry during cranking. During cranking, all the pressure needs to get into the cylinder. This thing needs upwards of 4,000 PSI to start. So we have two bad injectors. I looked at all six. These two have little heads of, of foamy diesel coming out during cranking. The, the back injector is bone dry. And on the driver's side bank, all of these injectors here, because I checked these earlier, so I'm gonna pull this fuel line up. All of these ports back here, this is our return line. Let me just get this off of here, okay. so. Um, this is the real deal guys. I took all this apart. So by the way, I don't make things up. This is reality So all your return nozzles like right here and and so forth and so on all of this on the driver's side is fine Here's your simple bottom line guys. I'm really trying to help you if you get the leak oil line aka return line removed remove both sides at the same time left bank, right bank, leaf sensors hooked up, just crank it over. It's gonna crank and not start if that's your condition like where I'm illustrating here. If that's the condition, look for the flow. If you got flow coming out of those return ports, you have a bad injector automatically. You replace those free flowing injectors and go from there. If you don't wanna to listen to my advice, you're gonna just start replacing a lot of parts. Thank you for watching.